to be fair to the creators of um, the Eat movies, expecting this um, cinematic adaption to be successful was something I was not believing. And it's not the fact that uh, I don't trust Hollywood making good horror movies anymore. I've seen some good ones recently. Well, it was a remake, it was an adaption, and um, adapting the book to the big screen is very, very hard. Let's be fair, It by Stephen King is a very large book. It's, uh, what, uh, 1400 pages long, I think. And also, it's a... Uh, it's not only big in uh, page number, it's complicated because we have two different timelines that are interweaved and they are 27 years apart. Um, okay, it's a bit of an uneven novel for uh, many critics and I can say that it left me cold uh, 18 years ago when I read it. Sure, there are some amazing parts of it, but there are also some subplots and some stuff happening that are Controversial to say the least, and if you read the book, you can already think of one of them. So, uh, we had two movies, we had Eat Chapter 1 in 2017, and it was a huge success. And now, we have the second part of uh, Adoption, Eat Chapter 2, that it's out in the movies, and I've seen it, and this is my review. So, for those who aren't aware of it, it's a novel where a group of yuppies return to their hometown, they receive a phone call from an old friend, and they start remembering that 27 years ago they had to fight an evil monster clown from outer space that ate kids. This clown is Pennywise, as it's known, or also referred as It. And what the movie crew did in order to adapt the movie is they took the two timelines and they split its timeline in a different movie. So it's chapter one was the childhood uh, story of uh, seven kids, the losers, uh, fighting against evil clown. It was set in the 80s, the book is set in the 50s I believe, and the contemporary part was in the 80s when it was released, but the um, director chose to do to shift the ages, shift the timeline uh, to the present for um, the contemporary part. That was an interesting choice and the first movie was great. It had a beginning, a middle, an ending. It set up a sequel very smoothly. Andy Muschietti did an amazing job as a director. Uh, there were lots of jump scares that were not cheap. It manages to make those child fear scenes look very creepy and I really liked it. Uh, the characters and the dialogues were very faithful to the spirit of the book, even though there were considerable differences in certain parts. There was uh, this scene, I was in a press uh, showing of the film. I was the only person who had read the book among the critics, we were discussing that after it, after the um, showing of It's Chapter 2, and I told them, yes, there is a scene where the kids do um, the nasty. And they were shocked that somebody published a scene like that uh, when I explained the um, whole concept of it and how it was um, set up. And yes, it was... Um, uh, hello, I freaked out when I read this part. Uh, back then, it, it was uh, one of the two scenes that really put me off the book. And it's very controversial, very pl problematic, I guess. But never mind, um, the first movie wasn't perfect. Uh, see, what's the problem with it? The book is set up in the interweave timeline, meaning that the characters start off as adults and we as they return to Jerry in Maine, and as they move around town, uh, they start remembering stuff from the past. And that's how uh, the 50s timeline is introduced in the book. So, when I saw um, It Chapter 1, there was this part in the beginning that uh, Pennywise appears scene after scene to scare a different child. And I felt it was very badly paced. It just uh, made me fed up with seeing the creepy clown. Believe it or not, because it's a creepy clown movie, so uh, you sh it's the creepy clown movie, and um, that's what you're there to see. 
after the movie started getting the pace as the children uh, bonded and they tried to uh, fight the evil clown, it was it worked great because if I remember correctly from the it novel, it's uh, it presented as one big chunk, no flashbacks, and it made me think that in chapter two there will be a pacing problem too because uh, those uh, early scare scenes from the flashbacks worked uh, to, in order to tie to keep the uh, plot tense for the book and w will be missing in the movie and um, what this uh, very big this almost three hour long movie did to so solve that it just had the flashbacks in those scenes where the characters were roaming around uh, Derry and they were remembering some clown appearances that were completely different from those in the first movie and I'm pretty sure they mess up the timeline Again, I've read the book um, 18 years ago, of a lifetime ago for me, and it's very hard to say whether or not they're faithful to the book. I think they're not, but that's beyond the point. If you remember the book better, please leave a comment and say if I'm wrong or not, because I'm not reading the beast again, really. So yes, there were some timeline issues with this part. It, it bogged down the movie a lot. I didn't like the jump scares, really. Um, it set up some interesting parts later as the heroes they'll revisit those scenes as well as scenes from the first movie but I was really bored at this place because it was too much up to that point the first 40 minutes were amazing because Moschetti did something amazing with the beginning instead of focusing on horror he focused on the emotions behind the characters. Actors did a great job representing the characters. I really liked Richie in this one too. I think he was a breakout character. And Ed, those two characters had a great um, chemistry. There were some differences from the original novel. Yes, this emphasis on the emotional parts, the interaction, they, their horror as they start to remember the clown. And you can see how their past affects their presence. Valerie went from an abusive father to an abusive husband. Ritzy is a comedian, a stand-up comedian, uh, because he was the joking one. Um, Ed has found a wife very similar to his overprotective mother. And there is this uh, cyclical element to it that is both a boon to the movie as well as a challenge, because sometimes it feels like you're watching the same movie again. It feels more like a remake than a sequel. And there were some great scare scenes that were also punctuated by great humorous scenes. I mean, there's an early scene where a child walks up to one of the characters and tells him something, and he believes it's Pennywise, and he flips out, but it's not. And that was a great scene, and that made the pace flow. Um, there's the Chinese restaurant scene, which was amazing. It was both creepy and hilarious, and that's how it is supposed to be. It's about childhood fears, it's about a monster clown pulling demonic pranks on his victims. And that felt very good. There are some great scenes throughout the movie. Even though I complain about the jump scares, there was this amazing House of Horrors scene that really works. There is a great creepy scene with an emphasis on the emotional core. Okay, I didn't like the end battle with the clown, it was a repetition of what was happening in the first movie, so it didn't felt special in my opinion. Even the way the clowns defeated is very similar to the first one, to be fair, and this um, balance of um, sequel versus remake, I'll say, is not uh, what is something that doesn't work in uh, this movie. I think there is some serious uh, pacing issues. I didn't enjoy it that much, but let's be fair, if you like the first movie, you will probably have fun in the second one. And I think that this happens because the characters are there. And the characters are very alive, very... not exactly well developed, but they give the impression of realness, of growth, of story arcs coming together. These are taken from the book and King is very good at creating characters. You know, the movie respects that. It's a very respectful adaption. I'll give it that. It's, it was very hard to properly adapt this book. I'll accept that. And I think 
the creators of the movie did the best possible to do that. And I think that you have to watch it if you're a Stephen King fan, because there is one scene where King himself appears and he gives an amazing performance. This was an amazing scene and I think it was the best scene in the whole movie. It was hilarious. King's performance is top notch. He is as good as the actors in the movie, if not better. And you know what I want to see from it? I want to see a version where chapter 1 and 2 are tied together in a flashback um, frame when you, we start with the present and we have flashbacks breaking down the first movie. I think for a half hour movie like that would work much better uh, because it will uh, solve many of the pacing issues and some, and it will actually make those repetitions that appear throughout the two movies more relevant to one another because there were, there were many callbacks to the first movie but you know what? I didn't go to see this movie and uh, having seen the chapter one recently uh, if I, I could see those uh, repetitions in the same movie it would just make the experience much better and of course, uh, what is great in this movie is the ending, because um, what the adaption did is uh, it focuses on the emotional core of the character growth, of their uh, triumphs, their uh, pit their pitfalls, their uh, sacrifice, and their acts of heroism. And the way it ends, it just focuses on that. If you've read the book. And I'm going into spoiler territory here, so that was all about the movie. If you don't want to be spoiled about the book, you can like this video, share it, and then close it. Um, if you remember the book, um, there is a whole subplot with uh, Bev's uh, former husband, who is very abusive, coming to Derry. He's approached by the clown. He is becoming a pawn and he abducts Bill's wife and gives her to the clone to, to eat her brain out. So she's left a husk. And what Bill does towards the end is uh, because he um, can feel the turtle magic and in the movie there is no turtle. There are many differences from the letter of the book. It's, the lore is much more simplified in this one because there is still magic in Derry. He just rides on his bicycle and runs in the sunset and the man secures his wife and they're happy ever after. And it's good that it's not part of the movie. I was, um, back then I was more used to grim endings of uh, horror movie, horror novels. So I was put off by it. It was too magical, too childish, too feel good, too uh, deus ex machina, to like it. And not including the whole subplot here. Um, I really liked the um, movie. I guess if there is a director's cut, the whole four-hour material they shot, it will be there. It was something cut in the final edit of the movie, but I think it works much, much better because at the end we have the losers, the remaining losers, because we lose some of them in the movie, as you know, because you've read the books, and we see them getting closer. And I think what really works for it is the characters, their growth, and the way they act. Each chapter 2 was more sentimental than scary, and I feel that's why, um, that's what I liked in it, that's what I respect in it. So, thank you for listening to me, and I'll see you soon in another video. Goodbye.